Okay, and welcome back to Matthew's Travels and Tips. Now we haven't released a video in a, in a little while, in a little while, but that is um, mainly because of the travel restrictions that we've had during the pandemic. That there weren't really much changes to the passport process. Um, one of my popular videos is how to complete the government application form to DS11, and something that I did notice is uh, in my video. It was one of my earlier videos, the recording's pretty bad, but I do see that uh, it is an important video for people that people would like to watch. So I am going to remake this video, and I'm just simply going to complete. Um, show you how to complete the government application form, the DS-11. Okay, so the first step in the process is we're going to go to travel. Dot state dot gov. I will include the link for this in the description below. And I'll actually make it even simpler. I'm simply going to include a link that's going to take you directly to comp directly to the section where you get to complete a form. But if you're starting from simply going to travel dot state dot gov, you click on get a US passport, to, and then you scroll down to I need a pass I need a passport so. We're going to click on apply in person, go to fill out DS11 form, go to form filler, and it's going to take you to this website, pptform.state.gov. You check that you've read the privacy and computer fraud, you hit submit, and here we're going to fill out, an, fill, out, fill, out, fill out online and print. So first step in the process is we're going to complete the information. So we have Matthew travel tips and let's go to where somebody's going to enter some information here um, just for filling out the form sake Alright, so once you follow the first section, you hit next, and it's saying there's an error, I forgot to um, select a state or territory. So I put my city of birth as Miami, so I'm just going to click Florida. Like I said, this is all your information. At this point, we're, they're going to want to get your information here. So this is, they want to know where to mail your passport, so it's essential that this information is accurate and correct. Now, there are cases where people um, have their address mailed to a P.O. box uh, or they have a, a situated Dropbox because they have issues with getting their mail. If that is the case, you select is this your permanent address, you click on no, and uh, under here you enter your permanent address, and at this point here is where you, where you want to put your, let's say your P.O. box. But for simplicity's sake, I'm simply going to say yes. Uh, at this point, they want a preferred method of communication. I usually select both uh, just to ensure that uh, if they do need to contact me, they will get through with me. So here I'll enter my email address. And we're going to put a phone number. Uh, at this point, they want to know your travel plans. If you don't have any travel plans, you leave it blank. If you do have travel plans, be sure to enter that information because if you're in a situation where you need to get your passport completed, let's say in a few weeks, the Department of State will know that, okay, at least there is some sort of urgency in this process. But for simplicity's sake, once again, I'm going to leave this blank. Your emergency contact, this is important because let's say you travel and there is an emergency. Once they have your passport is scanned at the embassy, they will have um, a security no, uh, emergency contact for them to contact back in the US to make any necessary arrangements or in, um, relay any information to them. So we're just going to put this here, 
just some simple random information. I'm just gonna say that's my brother. And we're filling out the form to DS11. So, in certain cases, they're gonna ask, "Have you? You're gonna have to fill this information out." So, if you've never had an, a passport book card or either before, yes, you're gonna be a DS11. However, there are cases for some of you where you've had a passport book or a passport card or even both, and it's been expired for over five years. In which case, you fill out the information accurately. This year, they want to know your issue date, not your expiration date. At this point here is your book number, your card number, and the same is going to be here. Um, the same information is going to be entered here. In my circumstance, I'm just going to say none, as this is the most simplest, most common DS11 application that most people who are looking at this video is going to be filling out. Um, anybody who's applying for first-time passport, or applying for a new passport, or a child passport, parental information is necessary. So. If, if you um, have only one parent registered on your birth certificate, you select unknown for one of them and enter the rest of the information. Both, uh, if, if neither is known, you hit unknown for both, you continue um, entering the information. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to hit unknown for both, as it makes no difference in my application. But in your case, be sure to fill out that information, as most people will have information to enter there. Spouse of applicant, has applicant ever been married? If you've been married, you enter the information. If not, uh, simply select no. If you have been married, you select yes, you enter the information, the place of birth of your spouse, whether or not he or she is a US citizen, the date of the most recent marriage, and they would also like to know if you've been widowed or divorced in the past. I'm gonna select no for the purpose of this video, and we're gonna hit next. Uh, at this point, you wanna know, are you known by any other names? So in this circumstance, for example, somebody who's been married and they, they've changed your name, you put your previous issued name, or if you've changed your name for any legal purposes, this is where you enter that information, uh, just so that the Department of State doesn't have any mix-ups when, when your information is being entered and they're checking your background and making sure that you're suitable and eligible for obtaining a passport. After you hit next, this is your personal application review, this is where you review the information, that is going to go in the application and be sure that every information that you enter is correct and accurate because this is what's going to be entered on your application and if it is approved it's going to be in your passport book and in some cases if it's incorrect it's going to cause a delay a denial a suspension of your application and just simply create a lot more headaches for completing the passport so once you've confirmed that all the information is correct you simply hit next and this is where they want to know what you're applying for. So you have the passport book, the passport card, or passport book and card. I always recommend getting both. The card is only $30 more. It's a form of ID, proof of citizenship. Very, very important document can come in handy in many circumstances. If you're simply driving into Canada, you can use it. Uh, driving into Mexico, you can use it. Going on a cruise, you can use your card instead of taking your book with you. So I always recommend getting the book and the card. And then you still want to know how fast you want to get it. So currently with the routine service, it's taking about 12 to 18 weeks, which is quite a long time. Uh, this is due to the pandemic and the restrictions that they um, impose on these agencies um, when, it not, when it just started last year. So I recommend selecting the expedited service. It's $60. It will get it done in four to six weeks, which is still quite a long time. But it's better than waiting up to 18 weeks and just having that little bit of uncertainty for when you're going to get your passport. So it, it, it is important that you expedite, in my opinion. And I do understand some people can't afford the, the $60, which is okay. It's like routine service. It's no additional cost. Just plan ahead. Ensure that you give yourself sufficient time for when you do plan on traveling so that you give yourself enough time to get the passport in hand. And the, and the next point is standard delivery or one to two de delivery. Standard delivery is where they just simply ship it priority mail, gets to you in like three to five days. 
or you can use one to two day delivery which is also shipped using USPS and you get it in one to two days after its process. Currently based on a four to six week time frame it's not necessary to pay that $17.56 as nothing is guaranteed, nothing is certain and you know you may be paying $17.56 to get the passport two days after the 18 weeks which is not doesn't make sense in my opinion so simply stick to standard delivery however if you want to make sure you get it as soon as possible, feel free to select that option. Uh, there is no speeding up the delivery of the passport card, that card is issued after the book. Uh, the book is the most uh, useful of the two. It does more things, it it holds priority. So they will issue the book and you'll get the, part, the card about a month, month and a half after you get the book. So keep that in mind, you're not going to get both books, the book and card on the same day. In very rare cases you may. However, it's not guaranteed. And this option here, file search. So the file search is if you don't have your birth certificate or naturalization certificate and you've had a passport before, before, they can do a file search where they do a simple search in their records for previous information to issue the passport. Now it's $150 plus a $35 fee for the agency. It's a lot of money. Make sure and try and get that birth certificate, that naturalization certificate. Make sure you have these documents safe, so that when you need it for your passport, you have it. In cases where you don't have your pa your birth certificate, you can probably get one issued by the courthouse for much less money. Um, and in some cases, you can get it in the same day, depending on the county and the, the state that you live in. So, uh, this is a that's just the last resort, last circumstance. If you do need the file search, select it. Uh, it's a lot of money, but try and find a different option if it's possible. So at this point, they say total payable to the Department of State, total of 235. So this through 235 is the cost of your passport book, your passport card, and your acceptance accept an agent fee. So the 200 is for the book and a card, and 35 is what you pay to the acceptance agents. Now this acceptance agent is somebody who's at the post office or courthouse who is gonna sign off on your documents, make sure that you're eligible for um not eligible, I'm sorry make sure that the information is accurate and that you are applying on the correct identity. They're going to verify the information against your birth certificate, your ID, and these are the f this is the way that the agency ensures that I'm not that somebody else is not simply applying for a password in your name or no scams or any kind of sketchy um, applications are getting in and getting out and no kind of fraud or identity theft is going on. So be sure once you complete this form, you print it out, uh, you're going to take it to the post office or courthouse to, to, as the next step of your process. But let's move to the next page. After you select these options, you hit next. And now you're in your final page. So it says print your forms, you're going to sign your DS-11. So at this point, you're going to scroll down. So you're scrolling down to close to the bottom of the page. And you'll see an option which says create form. So if you simply click on create form, it's going to say that you have to click on the box to indicate that you've read and acknowledged the steps. So you're going to check on this box here and you hit create form. So it's going to ask you to allow the download to come in. And at this point here, this is where you get to your completed passport application. So you're going to print this, save it to your computer as a backup, print two copies for yourself. You're only going to need one copy, but it doesn't hurt to have an extra one. And once your passport application is, once you get your passport, then shred all the documents, delete anything on file. You know, you won't need it after that, so. But it's always good to keep a backup so you don't have to go through the process of completing that application all over again. So once it's done, you take it to your post office, they will submit everything for you. And then at that time, you simply wait for the passport to come back. So this is me. Um, this is going to be a video I'm going to I'm adding as a recreation of my one of my first videos that I updated. Um, so the audio should be more clearer. I'm covering a few more things in this video. But thank you for watching. I hope that it helped you get everything completed. And if you have any questions or can, um, regarding this, feel free to write in the comments. We do our best to respond to all our comments as soon as possible. And thank you for watching. You guys have a good day.